Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today we're going to be looking at servo motors and how you can control them from the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Of course, the Raspberry Pi is a very versatile single board computer. You can do loads of stuff in software, Python, C, C++, Java, Golang, Rust, whatever it is that you want to do. And not only can you interact with the display or with over the network, you can also interact with the real physical world through the GPIO pins, it's the general purpose input output pins. And probably the simplest example of that is being able to flash an LED. But you can control much more than just LEDs. You can you know, do temperature control, there's stuff you can do with humidity, there's all the different kind of sensors that you can get. And also you can control motors, stepper motors and servo motors. And today we're gonna to be looking at servo motors and how you use them from a Raspberry Pi. Now a servo motor is different to a stepper motor. A stepper motor is basically an engine. You go forward, you go backwards, you can use it for robotics, for controlling belts, whatever it is that you want to do. Now a servo motor is different in that you tell it you want to go to a certain position and it goes to that position. So it doesn't go round and round and round forwards and backwards, it just goes to a certain position. And that's great for example, you know, steering on a rudder on an aeroplane, steering on a car, steering on some kind of robot, uh, opening and closing things, you know, anything we need a precision control to move something physically. Now I had an idea to build a kind of a mini radar system. I've bought a time of flight sensor, I think measures about 10 meters. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could sweep left and sweep right using this time of flight sensor. I can always fix on a certain position as well. And to do that, I need a servo motor that allows me to move this thing in, in a precision way so that I can actually build this mini radar system. So that's what we're, the aim is. In a future video, we're gonna be looking at this mini radar system with a time of flight sensor, but to control it, to move it physically, we need to use a servo. Okay, so this is a servo motor. These are very, very cheap. They only cost uh, a few dollars, a few pounds, a few euros. You can buy them individually or in uh, packs of five and 10. You can get them all over the place, any electronic store, any store that stocks stuff for Arduinos or for Raspberry Pis. You can even get them on Amazon. And basically in here, you have the motor and all the gears that can control this top part here to spin to a certain position. Now out on the top, you normally get a set of what they call horns, which is basically the arms, and you can put them on a few different shapes available. You can screw that in there as well. Now the motor is controlled using this cable, it's built in here, and at the other end there is a connector, and there are three cables you can see, brown, red, and orange. In this case, the red is for the positive, the brown is for the negative, and the orange is the control cable. Now because you would then connect this to a Raspberry Pi using the pins, there are no three pins that satisfy that combination on the Raspberry Pi, so we kind of need a break out from there. You could cut the end off here and use them somehow or you can use these jumper cables. Again they're available from anywhere that does Raspberry Pi or Arduino stuff. Okay and it's a male and a female. So basically you'd put the brown here into the brown part. Okay keep the colors the same and now I have a header here that I can connect to a pin on the Raspberry Pi. So for example, here is a Raspberry Pi and we can connect this to one of the ground pins. You'd connect the positive to one of the positive pins and then you connect the control pin to whichever pin you choose. I use GPIO 12 and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Just worth pointing out that I'm using the five volts from the Raspberry Pi, that's okay for this demo. If you're doing a more complicated project, you probably want to use a separate five volt power supply. You just need to make sure that when the servo is connected to that power supply, the earth wire goes to both the power supply and to the Raspberry Pi. Now normally at the end of the video I'd say if you like this video please like and subscribe and so on. I think I'm going to move that segment forward in my videos for a little while, see if that helps build up the community here. So if you do like this video please do give it a thumbs up and if you like this kind of videos please hang around by subscribing to the channel. Okay so let's go ahead over to a Raspberry Pi and look at the Python code for controlling the servo. Okay so here's our first program really quite simple, we import the GPIO0 library because that has a component for uh, controlling servos, so it understands servos, it understands the uh, pulse width modulization stuff, so it's really simple. And using it is really simple, all you do is you say, I want to create a new servo, and then you give it the pin number that you connected the servo to, in this case, pin 12. 
Now remember this is GPIO pin 12, not board number 12. If we have a look at an actual diagram of the Raspberry Pi, you can see that GPIO 12 here is actually pin number 32. So there's board numbering, one, two, three, four, five, all up to 40. Then there's these numbers here, GPIO numbers, which are related to how they're connected actually to the Raspberry Pi's processor. So GPIO 12, pin 32, and that's what I've connected the servo to. And then it's really simple. What we're going to say is we're going to print out and say start in the middle. And then you say servo mid. And that's really easy. It says put it in the middle position. We're then going to sleep for five seconds. We're then going to say go to the minimum position. And then so we say servo min. Then we're going to sleep for five seconds. Then we're going to say go to the max position. And we say servo max. Very simple. Servo min, servo max, servo mid. Sleep each time. And then finally back to the middle where we do uh, servo mid again. And then this last call here actually stops the uh, signals being sent all together so the motor just freezes in the position it's in. Okay, so we're going to run this and see what happens and it's not actually as nice as we think. So of course we start off by going to the mid position and you can see it's having a hard time keeping it there in the mid position. Then we say go to the min and again it's kind of, it went there, it kind of came back and this is because these uh, pulses that are being sent, if they are not exactly at the right width, of course, really it's telling it to move somewhere else. And these are software generated, which means that they're done by the software. And as you can see that as we went from min to max and back to middle again, it really had a hard time struggling to do that. Now that dancing around we saw there is called jitter. And the reason it's happening is because the pulses are generated by software. And if the software is out by even one millisecond, then the motor thinks it needs to be somewhere else because these are this is done on a millisecond uh, basis. Now the great thing is the GPIO Zero library allows you to use different subsystems for controlling the pins. In this particular case, we want to use Pi GPIO, which is a special library. Let's go and have a look at it. That's got some great features, and the main one is here is there's lots of hardware based timing for PWM and for servo pulses. So, the great thing is, if we use this library, it's actually going to be a hardware based rather than the software based, and that means it's mega accurate. So, let's go back to the code. So, the way we do that is we say from GPIO pins. Dot Pi GPIO import and then the way it calls it is a, it's called a factory the thing that's used to control the pins and when you create the servo here now you first of all you create a new factory according to the Pi GPIO library you want to use and then when you create the servo here still on pin 12 you say use this pin factory and the first time you run using the Pi GPIO library you need to make sure that its uh, server component is running so to do that you type a uh, sudo and then you type pi gpio d at the end because it's running as a background task and that will then fire that up so now we can go back to the code over here and the code below it is exactly the same so you've always changed this factory part here saying we want to use a different way to control the pins don't use software if we go back here to the original program we actually see there was a warning given out saying that it was actually using the software fallback and that to reduce the server jitter use the pi gpio pin factory is what we're doing so there is this error message actually that comes up when you try to run it using the old method. Now in the new method we use this uh, Pi GPO factory and then the rest of the stuff is exactly the same. Mid, min, max, all that stuff is exactly the same. Now if we run this one we'll see it's much much smoother. So go to the middle, there you go, it's not wobbling about, it's not lifting from, sh shaking from side to side. Now go to the minimum, there you go, it's turned. Now it's going to, second, it's going to go to the other end, there you go to the maximum, okay, and then it will go back to the middle again. So that's pretty rock solid there, no jittering, no dancing, and that's absolutely a much better solution. But did you notice something? Let's run it again. Did you notice that it doesn't go all the way to 90 degrees? It's kind of like, what is it, 60 degrees, there you go, look, that's not all the way around to 90 degrees. And when it goes back the other way, it's exactly the same. There's a bit of a problem. Now, let's just talk about that for the moment. What it turns out is that if you look at the uh, specification for one of these SG90 um, uh, servos, Okay, and here is a data sheet for one of these uh, SG90s. Uh, and it says here it should be able to do 180 degrees, 90 degrees in each direction. Okay, and it gives you the stuff here. And it says, look, between 1.5 means in the middle, 1.5 millisecond pulses, 2 millisecond pulses means uh, to all the way to the right, and 1 millisecond pulse means all the way to the left. And that's how it should work. And here is a kind of a little diagram to show you the width of the pulse between 1 and 2 milliseconds. But 
it turns out that the board, the motors that I bought, even though this is actually the same uh, data sheet that you get for it, my one has actually got slightly different. It actually needs to be um, 0, uh, 0, 0 0.5 milliseconds uh, all the way to the left, 2.5 milliseconds all the way to the right, and still 1.5 for the middle so it's actually it's got a slightly bigger range which is why my ones are not going to where they should now the good news is that inside the uh, gpio zero library you can say set the minimum pulse so in this case i've said 0.5 uh, milliseconds set the maximum 2.5 and then it does all the rest of the calculations for you so again pin 12 we're passing in the other factory the other way of controlling the pins hardware controlled now not software and i've actually changed the range and now if we run this one we can see it actually worked much better so we start off in the middle that's still working absolutely fine and then after we've waited our few seconds we can get there we go now that's 90 degrees you can see that's absolutely much better to what we were doing before and back down the other way there you go so that's now 90 degrees and then it will come back to the middle again in a moment there you go no jitter and now the full range so hopefully if you buy one of these to use on your raspberry pi it will actually have the standard values of um, 1,000, 1 1.5 and, uh, and uh, 2,000. But uh, if it doesn't, play around with the minimum and the maximum here. Uh, and that's how I got my one to work properly. So the final program I want to show you here is that the, the reason we're doing this, I want to make a little mini radar project using a, a, a flight of time sensor that I've bought. And I want to mount it on this and I want to do sweeps, sweeps to the left and sweeps to the right like a radar would do. So what we're going to do here is that this beginning stuff of this code is exactly the same. We can see here we're setting up a servo. I've changed the the widths here, the, the beginning and the end, as we discussed previously, still on pin 12. But what I do here is I say, well, go from zero to 360 and then set the servo value to be whatever the sine value is, which of course gives us a, a number between minus one and one, which is what the value is expecting, somewhere between uh, minus one and one, with zero being the center. And then because this is in, uh, you have to convert it to radians, that's all as we're going along there, and then sleep a little bit. So this is a really simple program that will basically, using a sine wave, will sweep from the left to the right, from the left to the right, and that looks actually looks quite nice. So let's just run that and see that running. So there we go, you can see it's swinging, and then because it's a sine wave, of course it slows at the end, comes back around again, slows. It's a nice sine wave here, and there we go. Now imagine a little radar unit pumped on top of that, and it's kind of sweeping left and right. That will be the next project that we do now that we have this uh, absolutely working. Now before I go, I just want to say I do have a monthly newsletter called Gary Explains, where I cover everything I've been doing here on this YouTube channel, everything I've been doing over on Android Authority, plus whatever else I've found interesting on the internet. If you want to subscribe, go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this first look at servo motors. As I said, another video coming in the future where I put a time of flight sensor on top of that uh, rotator arm, on top of the horn, and I build a mini radar system. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.